I'm Stella, the firstborn in the Henderson family. My father was an only child, and my mother had four siblings, but she never maintained contact with any of them, so I know very little about her side of the family. Our family consisted of four members, including my younger sister, Bella. My parents got married after dating for two years in college. My father hailed from a wealthy family, while my mother had a more humble background. Despite my paternal grandfather's objections, they fell in love and married swiftly. At that time, my father was infatuated with my mother and chose to go against his family's wishes, even severing ties with them in order to create a wonderful life with her, which sadly never materialized. My mother married my father of her own free will, although she often sang songs of regret for the choices she made. After my father lost contact with his family, he had to face his problems alone. Devoid of any financial or emotional support from his relatives, he had to start anew, forge a successful career, and provide a home for our family. My mother, however, was never content or truly happy. She continually pushed my father to achieve more. Despite being emotionally and physically drained, my father did everything he could for us. We lived in a small town in a modest yet comfortable house. While I had a stronger bond with my father, Bella was drawn to my mother. Perhaps it was because her personality resembled our mother's. Bella was stubborn and indulged, and my mother rarely corrected her mistakes, which only worsened her behavior. As Bella grew older, she became increasingly defiant. We constantly argued over materialistic pleasures and money, much like our mother did. Throughout our upbringing, all we heard from our mother were complaints about designer clothing and luxury items. She frequently argued with our father over things he couldn't afford, so Bella learned from the best. No matter how hard I tried to correct her behavior, she remained unchanged throughout our parents' marriage. Now, let me tell you what happened when our mother's secret was revealed. You see, I remember instances when mom brought a stranger into our house several times. We were too little to understand who dad was or what he meant when he wasn't at home or visiting the business. But I remember informing mom, and mom told him that dad struck her and lied about him doing terrible things. The man was Benjamin, our new stepfather. Their affair lasted years before my father found out. It happened one day when she invited him home, and dad suddenly arrived from work early. Dad was horrified when he saw them all snuggled up on our living room couch. He charged at him, and a fight broke out. Bella and I were afraid. We both knew it was bad, but we were not children. We should have notified them, but since it was our mother, we both remained out of it. Her nasty behavior also ruined our personalities. I was anxious and constantly worried about our family splitting apart, but Bella was a complete rebel. Sleeping around and having fun, just like mom. Anyway, dad slapped mom straight in the face. I watched her fall down, but she appeared to have gone insane since she was shouting and yelling. Not even acting guilty. After Benjamin went, dad isolated himself in his room. We all knew what was coming, a divorce. So, dad avoided mom and didn't approach her after that day. He told her to leave the house, and she didn't mind. She packed her belongings, and I cried, trying to stop her, but she didn't listen. She left the house the next day and went to Benjamin, as we later discovered. Dad was heartbroken, and she didn't care. I knew I was going to be with him and not her. Dad contacted his family attorney, an old friend of his. It could be the first time he has spoken with someone from his family in many years. Mom disliked everyone there, or so. He stayed apart from everyone. His acquaintance came to our place after two days, and Dad described his dilemma and how he wanted to make sure she didn't get too much of his money. He was an accomplished lawyer, and he assisted Dad. Dad had little under his name because my grandfather had not transferred anything under his name, so he didn't lose anything when he eventually divorced her. Mom returned, however, with no sense of shame. I'm talking to her lover while holding hands. Dad was furious, 
and we brought this friend over to our place. Dad raged and cursed at her, but she refused to leave. Fortunately, his friend intervened and attempted to defuse the situation. He got Dad to sit down and hash things out. But when my mother opened her lips, his eyes narrowed, and she wetted her lips, leaning back on the couch and throwing the bomb at us. She demanded that we move out with her or not. She's heading to court. I felt perplexed and enraged at the same time. We weren't kids when she came here and threatened to go to court. I just remained silent, staring over at my father, who had his jaw clenched and his hands fisted, as if he were about to snap her neck or strike her boyfriend in the face simultaneously. Before I could say anything, Bella spoke up, telling me she wanted to live with her mother instead. Her remarks astounded me beyond comprehension. Dad had the same reaction when he rose up and turned to face her, reminding her of the harsh truth and the reason for his divorce. His mother cheated. However, Bella simply shrugged, blaming him for not being able to provide her with the happiness she deserved. My father's face fell when he heard that. I felt terrible witnessing it all, so I intervened. Blaming her for being so selfish and ignoring the reality that dad always worked hard for us. But Bella merely sneered, laughing and taunting him. I couldn't believe it was my sister. She refused to recognize any of it, claiming that she and her mother deserved a good life and that Benjamin intended to provide it. I just shook my head, expressing my intention to stay with him no matter what. Hearing this, mom rubbed my arm, her long nails scratching into it as she shook me, instructing me to calm down and choose the best. I shoved her away, glared at her, and screamed how much I detested her and her self-centered goals. Dad's friend warned her not to put too much pressure on me, so Bella agreed to leave with her while I stayed. We were both of legal age to make a decision, so the issue was settled immediately. Bella dashed upstairs, packing her belongings into a bag and departing in his luxurious car. Dad's friend chatted with him about various legal procedures before leaving. I sat calmly until Dad told me to go to my room. I overheard him cursing and becoming drunk. He yelled profanities all night while I attempted to sleep. The next day, Dad went to meet with his attorney again, leaving me at home. I heard the doorbell ring and dashed outside, only to see Benjamin standing there. I grimaced when I saw him, and he asked if he might come in. I was unsure of the motive for his visit, but I let him in, and he entered. The man sat on the sofa, quickly speaking up and getting to the point. He began by emphasizing his sincerity toward my mother. Then he went on to talk about a family he wished for and gradually began pleading with me to abandon my father and join them. He offered to cover all of my bills and provide us with a comfortable living environment in his home. I remained quiet until he began disparaging my father, calling him a loser and a failure. I walked over to him and threw the juice I had been drinking all over him. He got up, swearing and screaming, before I could say anything. I was aware of the door. Click. It was my dad. His fury boiled when he saw the man I saw, both of them punching each other. Dad threw him to the ground and repeatedly pummeled his face, nearly breaking his nose. If it weren't for our neighbors, who ran over to stop them when they heard the commotion, the man cautioned and threatened father before leaving our house and giving him a glare. Not telling me to consider what he stated. I didn't think, though, because I couldn't figure out what he truly wanted and what he would gain by adopting us. It only contributed to the baggage mom was bringing him. Anyway, after that, Bella was officially his daughter. She picked up on the opulence of his home and the dreams he showed her. I continued to live with my father, but one day I decided to pay mom and Bella a visit, which dad allowed me to do. I knew I could move out as well, but I didn't want to leave him depressed, and I couldn't manage my finances, so living with him was far preferable. I heeded his words and asked him for permission whenever I wanted to meet them. I went to his house, and Benjamin lived in a more affluent region, in a larger house with cars and servants. 
When I got there, I was shocked to find my mother and Bella. They acted like they were the world's rulers. Wearing branded gear from head to toe and screaming at the servants. It was unbelievable. I sat there, attempting to chat with them about how they were doing, but they began the same ridiculous topic. Leaving dad and moving into the magnificent property, abandoning the mediocre life and adopting this lifestyle. But I refused. Benjamin entered just then, his brows rising to his hairline as he noticed me. He came to see me and began talking trash about my father. I stood up and yelled at the man, and mom jumped up and slapped me. I was stunned to my core. She yelled at me to respect my new stepfather and called me an ungrateful brat. I looked across at my younger sister, who sat there casually, unconcerned about me at all. I left the house and returned, promising myself never to see them again. Later that night, Bella texted me, telling me how silly I was and how we would gain from the solution. She told me how much of an inheritance we would receive after properly registering as his children. Her materialistic viewpoint disgusted me, so I chose to ignore her. Bella grew accustomed to her new surroundings and began to despise our father even more. I knew Benjamin was feeding her hate, and she was doing anything he said. She began to despise our father's presence and to constantly criticize him. She would talk about how good our stepfather is and how well he treats them. But I ignored it all and ceased contacting her. After two years, my dad and I are still following the same schedule. I would go to college, while he would go to work. That was until one day, everything changed. Dad was at home on Sunday morning, reading the newspaper, when he received a call from an unknown number. He ignored it, but it kept ringing, so he finally answered. I was in the kitchen, preparing myself some toast. I heard my father gasp as if he had heard something truly shocking. This made me run towards him worriedly as I started questioning him about the matter. Dad was crying silently as he whispered that my grandfather was in the hospital and the call was from his secretary. That day, Dad sat there pondering about his next move when I pushed him to go meet him. Dad was anxious about meeting him after so many years of remaining isolated from him. But in the end, I encouraged him to set every dispute aside and go. Dad packed up his stuff in a little suitcase and went, leaving me all alone to worry about the situation. The city where my grandfather lived was a few hours away from our town. A whole day passed, and I got no news from Dad. When I finally called to inquire about his arrival, he informed me that my grandfather had died by the time he arrived. Dad spent a few days there, and when he returned, he refused to eat and began working tirelessly. One day, Mom came to pour gasoline into the flames. She learned about the circumstances and, rather than sympathizing with him, began laughing and insulting him. Blaming him for his father's death. Dad had a panic attack and was immediately transported to the hospital. I screamed and begged Mom not to come to the house ever again and she tossed some money at me. Before storming out in her expensive high heels. Because of his illness, his father was advised to relax in bed. As a result, he missed two weeks of work and was fired. He was an old employee, after all, and they preferred young, dynamic employees. I started looking for a job. However, my qualifications and talents were insufficient, and all I was offered was a server position at a local cafe. It was difficult for us to fulfill the ends. There was hardly any food or supply left. Just as we were about to succumb to despair, Dad called us again. It was my grandfather's secretary. He wanted to talk in person, but I told him about Dad's condition and invited him over to her house. He was, however, joined by another man when he arrived two days later my grandfather's attorney. I offered them some cold beverages, and they all sat down in the living room. The conversation began slowly, and we had no idea why they were even here, but when they mentioned a $5 million inheritance, Dad and I were stunned. 
Dad, of course, belonged to an affluent business family. He had left everything for mom, so we were surprised to see that his father had not excluded him from the bequest and had included it in his will. That it would pass down to him and his children. They began discussing legal procedures, which led to a stunning revelation. Dad claimed to have two daughters, but one of them is now officially in her stepfather's custody. The lawyer told us that she is no longer taking his family name and is no longer under his name, so she will not receive anything. I was startled to learn that we received such a large share of the inheritance while Bella received nothing. I had no idea how she would react once she was aware of the situation. But I knew she was not going to take it calmly. Dad sat quietly thinking about something before ultimately stating that Bella would not receive anything because she had willingly left them to be with Benjamin. I expected him to say everything and consent, after all, it wasn't my money. After many days, we had completed all of the paperwork and received our respective shares. Dad decided to stay in the same house where he had previously lived, which was almost a mansion. And I could spend the money on whatever I wanted, while he would look into ways to handle Grandpa's business. We moved out and began to settle there. However, my life has taken a complete 180 degree turn, and I couldn't be happier. One day, I went shopping for branded clothing and ran across Bella. She was astounded to see me purchasing items from such an expensive store. She was with a friend group of spoiled, rich brats, but excused herself and instantly came to me. Dragging me outside, she inquired about my reason for visiting, and I only briefly told her that dad is handling grandpa's affairs again. I knew she wasn't dumb. So she quickly realized that father and I were back to being, well, rich. But she didn't care because she was living a good life. And this caused something inside me to crack. I blurted out the large bequest we received. Bella's eyes almost bulged out of their sockets upon hearing that number. I was pleased to see her reaction. She inquired about her portion, and I informed her that because she is no longer a member of the family, she will not receive a penny. Bella couldn't believe her ears. I knew that if we hadn't been in public, she'd have begun clawing at her own face for being so dumb. She questioned me about her new address, which I gave her for whatever reason. After that, I returned home and did not discuss the situation with Dad. But I knew it was only a matter of time before she showed up and caused a scene. And this is exactly what happened. Bella turned up two days later, enraged and outraged, along with Mother. Dad was home, and I was in my room. We were informed that two women had come to meet us and introduced themselves as family. I can't help but find it humorous. Anyway, Dad was not pleased after hearing that, and when the two women entered, they immediately began demanding Bella's portion. Dad sat there casually as I watched them calmly. She began throwing items in an attempt to rile up her father, but all he did was say that nothing was hers and she would not receive anything. Before the two women could physically or verbally attack him, Dad summoned his security and threw them out. I felt awful for Bella, but I knew she deserved it. A week later, just when I thought Bella had learned her lesson and would grasp the situation, I was proven wrong. She called me and spat profanities at me, calling me everything from a jerk to a betrayer as I idly listened. I knew she couldn't accept the fact that she'd lost so much money. I told her it was not up to me and that her attitude would not get her anywhere. Bella did not interrupt me for a while after the phone call ended, which I assumed was because she finally comprehended what I was saying. But later, I received some extremely surprising news. It was about 7 a.m., and I was getting ready to go to college when Bella called. I initially ignored it and did not answer the phone, but she continued texting me to pick up, so I ultimately had to. The first sound I heard was a loud, screeching voice, which caught me off guard. I instantly stopped what I was doing and let Bella speak. She informed me that her credit card has frozen, and she has been unable to purchase anything for herself for the past week. And she doesn't have any money, 
and Benjamin informed them that his company had gone bankrupt owing to internal fraud. Of course, executives are corrupt. I was stunned to hear it. When I asked her what had happened, she began to tell me every detail. So what I gathered from her chat was that Benjamin had lost his money. And his company has been in default for several months. And now that his credit card got frozen and he was heavily in debt, he had to sell his mansion and automobiles right away to make up for it all. They have to relocate to a leased apartment and even return their fancy belongings. There was a lot to take in. I didn't know what to say, so I did my best to console and coax her, but Bella said something unexpected. She suggested that I speak with father and allow her to visit us. I didn't know why she wanted to meet us, but I had a feeling. I agreed and resolved to tell dad everything when he came out of his room for breakfast. When I told him about everything, his expression was unreadable, and he agreed to meet with Bella. Bella came to meet us the very following day. She looked unhappy, and her eyes were red and swollen. I pity her state because she appeared so different from the last time I saw her. She immediately burst out crying and begged her father to forgive her. And she began shouting about how much she regretted doing everything. I knew dad was doubting it as much as I was, but when he said the obvious, Bella froze. He asked if she was back now that Benjamin had gone bankrupt and she needed money. And this is exactly what we had. Bella was dumbfounded for a minute before she began to apologize for her previous shallow behavior and said that she had realized that nothing, including wealth, lasts forever. Now she wants to re-establish her relationship with us and be a part of the family again. It sounded really ludicrous. I'm not going to lie, she was young. Additionally, we both agreed to give her another chance because we believed mom and later Benjamin had duped her. However, father made it clear that because she had given up the family name, she would not be able to receive any of the inheritance. It was already divided, but she behaved well, and he trusted her, so he might give her his own. But only in the future. Bella thought about it for a few minutes before nodding. It was evident that he didn't trust her, but he gave her another chance. Bella returned with her luggage and settled into a large room immediately next to mine. Her manner had completely altered, and she tried to be very pleasant and nice. And let me tell you, it was a huge shock to me. It looked as if she was denouncing her previous actions and attempting to change for the better. I liked the new version of her, and we soon got along. Because I was the one who was wealthy, I would treat her well and buy her gifts. She began to take money from me, which was routine for me. I knew she needed it and didn't mind delivering it to her. I heard mother and Benjamin were fighting a lot. When Bella called her, she was either high or hyper. There was no in-between. Benjamin was still attempting to make sense of the situation and had little money to maintain living with it. I paid little attention to her conversations with mom. In all fairness, she deserved it. I knew they were struggling even to put food on the table, and Benjamin seemed equally frustrated with her. Bella, on the other hand, made no effort to assist them. I expected her to contribute financially, but Bella distanced herself and didn't send them a single penny. I assumed she was avoiding them, but a few days later, the truth came to light. When I overheard Benjamin's phone call, I learned what Bella had been up to all along. One night, I woke up feeling thirsty and headed downstairs to get some water. I could hear her talking to someone, and I noticed that her bedroom door was slightly ajar. I inadvertently peered inside and saw her engaged in a phone conversation. I was about to leave when I heard her mention the name, Benjamin. My curiosity got the better of me, and I froze in place. What I heard left me feeling hurt and betrayed. Bella was discussing how she planned to somehow obtain money from us and persuade Benjamin to share it. She intended to return to them later, and Benjamin could use the money to revive his business and file a lawsuit against us. She complained about being tired of seeing our faces and claimed she was only doing it for the money. 
They even discussed having us sign over our property to ensure they got everything. In essence, she was scheming to steal everything from us while living under our own roof. I couldn't contain my anger any longer, so I burst into the room. I stormed in, slapped her forcefully, and grabbed the phone from her hand to unleash my anger on Benjamin. I suppose Dad heard the commotion and came to inquire about what was going on. I spilled everything, recounting what Bella had been saying, and Dad's face turned crimson with rage. He took hold of Bella's arm and escorted her out of the house before kicking her out. Dad was heartbroken and spent the entire night in tears. This incensed me even more, so the following day, I visited Benjamin and Mom's apartment. I brought along some bodyguards and warned them never to interfere in our lives again, or I would destroy whatever remnants they had left. Benjamin had lost all authority, and my threat was enough to intimidate him. He backed down when I reminded him that I had recorded his conversations with Bella, which could further expose and ruin his life. Then I cut ties with Mom completely. I also cautioned Bella never to contact me again. My father had to spend a few weeks in the hospital due to the stress he endured during the ordeal. I chose to move forward and focus on my father's health. However, I later learned that Benjamin had abandoned his mother, kicked Bella out, and ended up in a shelter. Barely a month had passed before we received news about Benjamin's arrest. Oh, Benjamin. He was apprehended for his fraudulent activities and currently languishes in jail, with no one to bail him out, awaiting further legal proceedings. I felt a sense of satisfaction seeing them all face the consequences for what they did to our lives. Benjamin's business was in ruins, and Mom and Bella were struggling to make ends meet. Meanwhile, I began working closely with Father and getting involved in our family's business. Bella and Mom remained estranged from me, and I never had to see their faces again. Dad and I continued to live in our mansion, and I hoped that I would only grow happier without their toxic presence and negativity in my life ever again.